रेकॉर्डिंग लगो थे क्लासरूम थ्री आरसी बोनसर रेकॉर्डिंग समीर अस्तित्व समीर आओ जनों नहीं नहीं हेलो सर नमस्कार नमस्ते हाउ आर यू सर नमस्ते सर so we'll start with the uh, mcs 033 yes sir okay okay sir so as you know it has two portions one is recurrence relation and another, another one is graph theory okay so basically where first start we'll start right now with recurrence relation okay so first of all what is recurrence relation let us consider an be a sequence of real numbers okay are you able to <coughs> are you able to hear me yes sir okay okay so let us consider an be a sequence of real numbers okay if it is possible to express an in terms of its the previously described terms of the same sequence so what i am saying an is a sequence of real numbers okay so if you can able to Express this number a n in terms of its previous numbers like a n minus of one, a n minus of two, so on so forth, a n minus of k. Then whatever the expression we are getting, that is known to be the recurrence relation. Okay. So next, whenever we are getting recurrence relation. <clears throat> how we are getting this recurrence relation first of all as we are learning discrete mathematics so many of the counting problems better i can say the moderate counting problems that can be solved by using this recurrence relation as per example we are getting this recurrence relation by means of the mathematical process known to be mathematical modeling as you know what is modeling some concept is given some circumstance is given and using those circumstance we can able to find a mathematical formulation a mathematical expression and that expression is nothing but the previous description as i have given and finally whatever the solution you are getting <clears throat> sorry whatever the expression we are getting that expression is nothing but a recurrence relation so how we are getting let us consider a small example so that is 
Fabio Dzeko. अच्छा एबे कौन करेगी ताले मोटा देख नोट पे टा लेकिन ले पिला के देख पा रहे हैं मरम मुद्दा को पढ़ तंगो मु पढ़े दे भी ये टा तेरे मु एबे फेस देखिए आपने कौन देखी है फेस ये साउंड क्लियर हो नहीं अच्छा तो लेट अस कंसीडर अन एग्जांपल how we are getting <clears throat> let us consider you have deposited certain amount in a bank and the bank is giving let us consider r percent of interest that is uh, compounded annually so that <clears throat> if we want if we we'll take this one as pn that happens to be the amount that we have invested so r is the rate of interest and t i am taking as time so finally after one year how much you will get pn or p <coughs> pn whatever the rate into t divided by 100 that is the interest you are getting and finally what will be after one year what becomes your principal amount? Pn plus Pn into R into 1 divided by 100. And suddenly by calculating this one, by <clears throat> calculating in this way, after 10 years, we can get certain values. But if we are introducing this method, this recurrence model, or if you want to develop a model in this regard, if I'm taking Pn be the principal amount after nth year, and if I'm taking, let us consider first one, I'm taking P2, that is P1, or the principal amount plus plus the principal amount into rate of interest into time by 100. But as after one year you are calculating so that we can able to write here after one year means P1 that happens to be P0 plus P0 into R into T by 100. Almost T is, 100, <laughs> T is 1. Likewise, if I'm just trying to find P2, what will be the value? P1 plus P1 into R into T by 100. So on so far, if I'll just write here P10, how much I should write here? P9 plus P9 into R into T by 100. Okay. So if I'm just taking the values from bottom to end, as it is given the rate of interest, so in place of P9, I can able to put the value that is P8 plus P8 into R into T by 100. Then in place of P8, if I'll just put the value of P8 as P7 plus P7 into R into T by 100. So on so far, finally, P10 can be expressed in terms of P0 and it's the interest calculated. That implies <clears throat> whatever the value we have got for P0, that can be expressed in terms of the principal amount that is invested at the starting point or at the starting of the year plus the rate of interest got 
in various after various years so if are just adding whatever the expression you are getting that expression is nothing but a recurrence relation because p10 are the principal amount after 10 years that we are getting p0 the initial amount plus the rate of interest amounts on various dates or uh, sorry after various years that are being added so that you are getting p p10 in terms of p0 that's why it becomes rt is known to be a expression and that expression is nothing but a recurrence relation okay let us Let's consider another example. That is the most important example, and that example is nothing but known to be Tower of Hanoi. For this Tower of Hanoi, <clears throat> so let us consider. this example let us hear properly because i will just give you the notes on this one or short notes on this one so let us consider <clears throat> there are rings are there so what are rings rings there are different size of rings are there or you can say loads there are certain <clears throat> number of loads are there So, if required, so the question says, if there are n number of loads are there, where the loads are being kept in a process that first bigger one, then slightly smaller one, then above slightly smaller one, and finally the smallest one is at the top. So then, if there are Three number of hang hangers are there. Hanger means where the loads can be kept. Then, if someone will ask you, what is the number of oils required so that the oils should be placed in a proper way? Okay, so that in this case, if I am considering first. let us consider first that i am taking a single one where the load is taken so that if i am taking the first one is my first hanger which carries a <coughs> load the second one hanger the third one hanger if i ask you what is the number of movements required so that this load will be shifted to the third one so that the number of movement is nothing but is with a single movement because the load is on the first hanger so it's a single movement it can be shifted to the third one let us consider there are two loads are there first one is the bigger one next is the smaller one so what is the number of movements required the smaller one first to be moved to the second one first so the number of movement is one then the bigger one to be shifted to the third one so the number of movements are two then from the second so what is the total number of movements are being done two <coughs> number of movements are two because the smaller one i have shifted to to second one then the bigger one i have taken to the third one and then the smaller one then to be shifted to the third one okay so what is the number of movements are required when the number of <coughs> loads are to one we have taken only one movement and when the number of movement sorry number of loads are two we have just taken the movement is three so let us consider another one let us consider there are three loads are there so what is the <coughs> how much number of movements are required for this one 
so first this smaller one should be shifted to which one to the third one first okay then this second smaller one to be shifted to the second one so what is the number of movements done <coughs> with this two movements so now the smaller one is in second hanger this sorry the number the smaller one is in the third hanger then the second one means slightly bigger one than the previous one is taken to the second one so the second one contains the second one second <coughs> middle or the second hanger contains the middle one means which is not the smallest one or not the biggest one then another one additional movement is required so the smallest one will come to this one will come to the second hanger then after we'll take a movement the bigger one to be shifted to the third one so what is the number of movements done till till now four because first <clears throat> we have taken the smallest one to the third one that is number one movement next the slightly bigger one to the second that is the second movement then the smallest one again from the third to the second one another movement then we are taking the biggest one from first to the third one so another one movement now they are not in proper format are not in proper order so what we are doing again the smallest one to be replaced to one so another one movement is there then the middle one again you are shifting from second to third so one another movement is required then the smallest one taking another one movement we are taking to the third one so now it is in proper way first the biggest one then the slightly smaller one then the smallest one so what is the number of movements <coughs> required here so when the number of digs or number of loads are three so what is the number of movements are required seven movements are required so you see when there was a single load what is the number of movement one when the number of loads are two so what is the number of movements required three so when <clears throat> the number of movements are three sorry number of loads are three what is the number of movements required seven so you see <clears throat> we are getting certain formulation so what is the formulation we are getting here try to see so you see n equal to 3 means number of dice is or number of loads are three so we are getting seven number of movements when the number of loads are two we are getting the number of movements are three when the number of dice are load is one we are getting one only one movement so that can you able to get here <clears throat> some mathematical formulation or not ha ah, vijay acha dekha la ilam koi dio ame tangu eta pathe do asi kebal suna do bhalo re suna tam se ek koi dio hala ki okay so i think this is not prominent 
so i will send you what i am just teaching you that i will send you by in your whatsapp that i will send you don't worry please hear it particularly okay so the number of movement is 7 when the number of loads are 3 we are getting 7 number of movements so are you getting some mathematical formulations from this sides are not certainly you are getting certain mathematical formulation so what are the formulations you see one can i write here two to the power of one minus one when i am getting this one three can i write here two to the power of two minus one if i am getting here two to the power of three minus one so like this, if there are n number of loads are there, what will be the number of requirements? Number of movements are required? 2 to the power of n minus 1. By induction, we can get it. But then question arises, how <clears throat> we are mathematically formulating this one that I have already shown. And certainly, this one is nothing, a counting problem that you are solving in terms of a recurrence relation whose mathematical formulation is nothing but 2 to the power of n minus 1. So, certain expressions we can also find in terms of some other because in counting problems, many of the problems can be solved in different approaches. But here, the approach you are taking, recurrence relation. So this happens to be one of the intuitive solution to the recurrence relation. Which mathematical model is this one? Okay. So let us consider another example. That is... <clears throat> That particular mathematical model, first, that is given to be by great mathematician and which later known to be Fermat's number. Okay. So, what that puzzle was? And that is also known to be rabbit puzzle. For that one, so first hear me, <clears throat> I will go through the mathematical model here and then finally I will show you. That in an island, a pair of rabbits were living. Okay? And the condition was, the pair of rabbits, pair of young rabbits, after two months, they can give birth to a new <clears throat> pair. Is it clear? So in an island there is there is a pair of young rabbits. After two months they becomes reproductive pairs and they give birth to a new young pair. Then what will be the number of rabbits after n months? So see, this rabbit puzzle So here, <clears throat> I'm just saying young pair Okay, and then I'm taking here first month second month, third month, fourth month, fifth month, so on and so forth. Okay? So, here I am writing young pairs. First I am writing reproductive pairs, young pairs. And I am writing here total number of rabbit. So, in the first month, what is the number of reproductive pair? Zero. What is the number of young pairs? One. 
so total number of rabbits in pair is one in second month what is the number of reproductive pairs zero what is the number of young pairs one so the total number of rabbits is one then in the third month this young pair becomes the reproductive pair so it becomes one and it gives birth to a new young pair so that happens to be two the total number of rabbit pairs becomes two and then after then after then in the fourth month the number of rabbit pairs is one and here it is one young pair is one and again it will give birth to another young pair so the number of rabbit pairs becomes 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 3 now in the fifth month so what is the number of reproductive pairs this is 1 then whatever the reproduction is done it has completed 2 months so the number of reproductive pairs becomes 2 so it gave birth to two young pairs and then another young pair is there so what is the no total number of rabbits five okay in the next month what is the number of reproductive pairs reproductive pairs becomes 2 plus 1 they give birth to three number of young rabbit pairs pairs plus 2 and then another one is this two becomes young pairs so the total number is 8 3 plus 2 plus so if we're just going on in this way we can able to formulate so you can just see from this table you can just see 1 plus 1 Are you getting two or not? Then this two plus one. Are you getting this one or not? Three or not? Then this three plus two. Are you getting five or not? Then this three plus five. Are you getting five or not? So in this way, <clears throat> if I'm continuing this way, we can able to find. The rabbit pairs after n month. If I'm taking n represents the number of rabbit pairs after n months. So that is nothing from this figure. What it is saying, a n minus of one means the number of rabbit pairs after n minus of months plus the number of rabbit pairs after n minus of r <coughs> n minus of 2 months so whatever the expression we are getting right now a n that is equal to a n minus of 1 plus a n minus of 2 where n is greater than r equal to 1 we are getting a mathematical expression so whatever the mathematical expression we are getting as per the definition this an is being expressed in terms of the previously described terms an minus of 1 plus an minus of 2 the next previous term so that is it a recurrence relation or not which is a very good recurrence relation and it has a very good solution also by considering and next question arises I have written here n is greater than or equal to one. Why I have written? Because month as n represents month, so that can I take month to be zero? Not at all. That's why n is greater than or equal to one. Okay. If equal to one, then we are getting one young rabbit pair. If it is greater than one, then we are getting succeeding values. 
using the previous results as I have just shown here. <clears throat> okay. So there are many more questions that we can able to solve or by considering the procedure that is mathematical modeling by using in this way. But think is that whenever we are getting certain mathematical model using, there are another solution like and sorry, another models like let us consider we are thinking <coughs> a bit string of length n where there are no conjugative zeros or there are no conjugative one. We can use that one by virtue of this one by using this concept. We can able to formulate and get through it. Okay. The next thing is when you are getting such type of mathematical models named to be recurrence relation. How we are solving those? Getting a problem doesn't solve the, all the purpose. So getting a <coughs> problem of this category, then we are thinking how we can solve these problems. So before solving this type of problems, we must first of all know that whenever we are modeling or getting a a recurrence relation or a expression of this type, how we can able to solve it? So solution is very much similar to the process of differential equation, solving ordinary differential equation. Okay. But as you know, solving a differential equation requires, first of all, we must learn that what is the degree of a differential equation, what is the order of a differential equation, then we are solving this one. Okay. So that before <coughs> going to solve, you must know what are the type of recurrence relation. So generally, this recurrence relation is of two types. One is known to be homogeneous type, another one is known to be non-homogeneous type. So what is homogeneous type <coughs> and what is non-homogeneous type? Generally, a recurrence relation is expressed as a n that is equal to K1, A n minus of 1 plus K2, A n minus of 2 plus K3, A n minus of 3 plus so on so forth. Kr, A n minus of R plus some special function. Okay. So the the general form of representation of a recurrence relation is like this, that is a n which is equal to k1 a n minus of 1 plus k2 a n minus of 2 plus k3 a n minus of 3 so on so forth k n k sorry k r a n minus of r plus f n. Then question arises what this K1, K2, K3, so on so for K are represents? They are simply arbitrary constants or numerical constants. And what this Fn represents? A special function. Okay. So whenever this special function F of N is equal to 0, then the recurrence relation is termed to be homogeneous. Okay. Whenever this function, special function f of n is 0, then it is known to be homogeneous. And whenever this f of n is not equal to 0, then it is termed to be non-homogeneous recurrence relation. So how we can able to say? This general one I can able to say 
that whenever the special function is absent or is not present, then the recurrence relation is known to be the recurrence relation with arbitrary constants. That is a n equal to k1 a n minus of 1 plus k2 a n minus of 2, so on and so forth, up to k r a n minus of r. And whenever this f, on, f of n, the special function is present, that is known to be non-homogeneous type or non-homogeneous recurrence relation. Then question arises, <clears throat> how we could be able to recognize a recurrence relation by seeing this expression? And how we could be able to say what is its order and what is its degree? Okay. In this general expression, if more than one terms are in multiplied form that defines the degree of the recurrence relation. Am I clear what I have said? If any term is a multiplication of one or more terms, then the degree of the recurrence relation is accordingly counted. If Am I clear? For example, if I am writing here a n equal to a n minus of 1 plus a n minus of 2 plus a n minus of 3 plus a n minus of 4 into a n minus of 5. So what is the degree of the recurrence relation? As here, first term is a single term, second term, third term, all are single terms, but the last one, a single term which is in multiplied up two terms. So how many terms are multiplied? Two terms. That's why the degree of this recurrence relation is two. Okay. If I'm writing here a n equal to a n minus of one plus a n minus of three. So what is the degree of this recurrence relation? Simply, it is 1. So, I can able to say this is a linear recurrence relation. Okay. So, if I am just saying, defining degree. So, this is simply a linear. Linear means the degree is 1. First one. If I am saying it is, the degree is 2. So, likewise, if I am writing here a n equal to a n minus of 1 into a n minus of 2 into a n minus of 3. So what should be the degree? Plus let us consider uh, 3 n. So I can able to say this is a non-homogeneous recurrence relation which degree is 3 because 3 terms are in multiplied form. Okay. Next comes, what is the order? So, what is the order of the recurrence relation? Generally, we are defining order by the number of terms involving, by the number of terms, number of terms involving to define Recurrence relation. So, what is the number of terms that are involving? So, if I am considering this second example, so what will be the order? The order is of 3. Why? <clears throat> How many terms are involving? A and minus of 1. In the expression I have written here, A n equal to a n minus of 1 plus n minus of 3. Here, you can ask me, sir, only two terms are there involved in order to express this expression. But why the degree is 3? Because we have just said this k1, k2, k3 are real constants. Arbitrary constant means real constants. So that 
can i write here an equal to an minus of 1 plus 0 into an minus of 2 plus an minus of 3 means here the arbitrary constant is 1 for an minus of 1 case and 1 in an minus of 3 case but 0 in an minus of 2 case so how <clears throat> how many numbers are involved three previously described numbers are involved that's why the order is three so i can able to say this expression is a <clears throat> linear recurrence relation of order three or third order linear recurrence relation am i clear so generally how we are getting the order you can just see i am saying three so short form i can mathematical i can write here so what is the last one n minus of three what is the starting one n so how i am getting n minus n minus of three that is equal to three so the order is three degree is not three order is three okay so let us consider some examples in this regard. So I am writing a n that is equal to a n minus of 2 into a n minus of 3 plus 7. So that <coughs> what type of recurrence relation this one is? First of all, this is non-homogeneous. Secondly, it is not <coughs> linear. So what is its degree? Two, because two terms are in multiplied form, then third one is what is its order? Order is three because the last term that you are getting this one, so the order is three. If I am saying, let us consider I am writing the first one. <clears throat> if I am writing here, a n is equal to k1 an minus of 1 plus so on so forth kn a let us consider n so what is the order and what is the degree here the degree is very similar to to be 1 but what is the order order is not defined or you can say zero order but this type of Recurrence relation has no application in it, but we should know it. <clears throat> okay. So whenever you are getting a recurrence relation that is of either of homogeneous type or of non-homogeneous type. In order to solve this homogeneous, first of all, we must go through one by one. Let us consider how to solve or how to solve this homogeneous linear equation, linear recurrence relation. So let us consider is given a n equal to a n equal to 3 a n minus of 1 plus uh, a n minus of 2. So this is simply, so I can write here n is greater than or equal to 2. Okay. Uh, now I am writing here plus 2. A n equal to 3 a n minus of 1 plus 2 a n minus of 2. So then question arises how we can able to solve it. Then before solving a homogeneous one we must think how we can able to solve. In differential equation there are different forms are available in order to solve this. But here, as you are saying, it's a model. So generally mathematical models, we can take the first approach to be in power form. So let us consider <clears throat> one of a predict solution be, predict solution I am saying, predict solution. So let us consider the predict solution of an 
is equal to r to the power of n. Predict solution means it's not the exact one. So then, what will be the n minus of one? That will be r to the power of n minus of one. What will be the value of a n minus of two? That is r to the power of n minus of two. So if you are just putting those values here in this expression, I can write here r to the power of n is equal to three into r to the power of n minus of one plus two into r to the power of n minus of two. If I am taking them all, so I can write here r to the power of n minus 3 into r to the power of n minus of 2 minus 2 r to the power of n minus of sorry n minus 3 into r to the power of n minus of 1 minus 2 into r to the power of n minus of 2 is equal to 0 if I am augmenting them all. So that if I am taking r to the power of how much value is take, can be taken common r to the power of n minus of 2 if I am taking common how much you are getting r to the power of 2 minus 3r minus 2 equal to 0. Okay. So now as the predict solution is of power form, so r to the power of n minus of 2 cannot be equal to 0. Then as there are two factors whose product is 0. So as the first factor cannot be 0, which one should be 0? The next one. <coughs> So that I can write here r square minus 3r minus 2 equal to 0. Okay. If you just go on solving, are you getting an equation of second, order, second degree or not? Now you see, we have got a second order linear second order recurrence relation. And we have, in order to solve this one, we have got this one. A equation we have got a quadratic equation means a equation whose degree is 2 whose solution is very much clear so I can able to get the value of I can go for a factorization so r should be equal to minus of 3 plus minus r square means 3 square minus 4 into a a is 1 into c c is 2 this one square root divided by 2a is 2 so whatever the value we are getting, minus of 3 plus minus 1 divided by 2. So one of the value we are getting, sorry, this one is plus 3. So 3 plus 1 by 2. So one of a root we are getting to be 2. And another one, we are getting 3 minus 1. So this is 1. So we are getting one of a value is 1. Another value is 2. So that... We have got R1 is 2 and R2 is 1. So after getting the value of R1 and R2, as you have predicted the solution to be R to the power of n, so that 2 to the power of n is one of a solution, 1 to the power of n is another solution. And as you know that how many solutions you are getting, if the linear combination of them will give you the general solution. So what do you mean by linear combination? So linear combination is nothing but the solution whenever multiplied by some arbitrary constants. So that I can write here alpha 1. The general solution can be written as a n. That happens to be alpha 1 2 to the power of n plus alpha 2 into 1 to the power of n. Then the question arises, I have said two things. One, I have said solution. Another one, I have said general solution. So what is the difference between one, between them? I have said 2 to the power of n is one of a solution. 1 to the power of n is another solution, but this happens to be the general solution. So what is the difference between them? The difference is general, whenever the general solution is nothing but the 
linear combination of some solutions but solutions are the individual solutions so that this 2 to the power of n is one of a solution 1 to the power of n is one of a solution but when i am getting the linear combination of them that is alpha 1 2 to the power of n plus alpha 2 1 to the power of n so we are getting a linear combination and that linear combination i is giving you the general solution so this happens to be the general solution okay then then <clears throat> let us think of a new one so suddenly whatever the expression you have got here we are getting that we are getting 2 1 so what this 2 and 1 becomes they are distinguished they are clear they are different so then question arises there may be different type of situations we must get how to get or how to handle such So, this happens to be a general one that we have got. So, let us think a generalized one. As you already have said here, that whatever the, cell, <coughs> whatever the equation we have just predicted or whatever the predict solution we have taken and from that one, whatever the expression we have got. As I have said, this is in power form. That's why this cannot be zero. So we are getting an equation. So whatever the equation we have got here, it has a name. So what the name is? Characteristic equation. What did name is? Characteristic equation. And solving which we can we are getting all these things. Okay. Let us consider I am taking another one example. So let us consider that example is n that is equal to six a n minus of one plus uh, minus let us consider minus nine a n minus of two where n is greater than or equal to two. Okay. So you can just see this is also a linear recurrence relation. This is also of homogeneous type and the order of this one is 2. So if I just try to solve it, let's find as I have taken their predict solution is r to the power of n. If I am putting here, can I write here r to the power of n is equal to 6 r to the power of n minus of 1 minus 9 r to the power of n minus of 2. So then try to find what will be the characteristic equation? What will be the characteristic equation? Find r to the power of, so I am getting r to the power of n minus of 2 into r square minus 6 r plus 9 equal to 0. So what is the characteristic equation right now? This one is your, this one is the characteristic equation. r square minus 6 r plus 9 is equal to 0. This happens to be the characteristic equation. Okay. Then, if I am getting this one is your characteristic equation. So, you are getting two roots, r1, that is equal to r2. What are the two roots you are getting here? r1 equal to r2. Is how much? Is equal to 3. 
So there you have got two solutions that are <clears throat> prominent, that are distinguished. But you are getting here two solutions of the characteristic equation that are not prominent, that are not distinguished, so that they are identical. Then suddenly I can add here 3 to the power of n is a solution. Yes or no? 3 to the power of n is a solution. But how I can able to find the general solution? So here, as already you know, the general solution is nothing but the linear combination of two solutions. How we can get the linear combination? So this is one of a solution. So the general solution is a n. So suddenly it will be alpha 1 into 3 to the power of n. Then shall I write here alpha 2 into 3 to the power of n? Not at all because if I am taking 3 to the power of n to be common. So what I am getting alpha 1 plus alpha 2. So I must get another arbitrary constant. How it can become say? The general solution it cannot be. So what will be then? So there is a concept. Whenever we are getting repeated roots, whenever we are getting identical roots, then in order to find the general solution, the linear combination is considered by considering the arbitrary constants with the roots multiplied with the certain identity. So what is the identity here? Or what is the unknown here? N. So that the general solution is alpha 1 into 3 to the power of 1 N plus alpha 2 into N into 3 to the power of N. Let us consider three roots are repeated. Or the root has been repeated three times. What will be done? As for example, I am considering, let us consider I am getting the characteristic equation is uh, r to the power of n minus of 3 into, let us consider this root 2 has been repeated r1 equal to r2 equal to r3 to be 2. That means how many times this 2 has been repeated? Three number of times. So that 2 to the power of n is one of a solution. But how we can able to get it? Get the general solution? So the general solution it will be n. That will be alpha 1 plus or alpha 1 into 2 to the power of n. Then alpha 2 into 2 to the power of n multiplied by n plus alpha 3 into 2 to the power of n into how much identity to be multiplied. How many times the variable or the identity is multiplied? Here one time. Then here how many times to be multiplied? That depends upon the degree of the characteristic equation and that means it must be repeated n square. Why n square? Why not <coughs> three times? Because here, here you can just see in the previous one. What is the degree of the characteristic equation? 2. So, when the variable is multiplied, how many times it is multiplied? 1 time. That is 2 minus of 1. Here, at the degree of the characteristic equation is 2, sorry, 3. So, how many times that variable to be multiplied? 3 minus of 1 times, that will be the highest degree, so that n square, so that the general solution will be of this much. If I am considering, let us consider a root r has been repeated k number of times. So what will be the general solution then? A n, that will be alpha 1 r to the power of n plus alpha 2 into n into how much 
r to the power of n plus alpha 3 into n square r to the power of n plus so on so forth. The last one is how many times repeated? k number of times. So alpha k into r to the power of n into how much? n to the power of k minus 1. Okay. So this happens to be the general solution. Am I clear of this one? <clears throat> In the next class, we will proceed the non homogeneous one. Okay. As well as some special tricks for solving the recurrence relation. Okay. This is all. So I'll just send you this uh, what I have just. So please try to thoroughly hear me. So the other things. What is required or what I am solving that I will <coughs> send you. Don't worry about this one. Okay, thank you. Excuse me, sir. Yes. Uh, sir, I want your note, sir. That I will send you. Don't worry. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay, okay, okay. Any sir, doubt in this regard? Are you able to understand me properly? Yes, sir. Okay. Any others? Any questions? Any others from any side? Okay. Thank you all. Thank you, sir. Namaskar. Namaste. Hello. Hello. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Sir, जो आजीरो class है लाना जो sir मतलब network issues हो कैसे आप उन्होंने जा भी है लाब description दो उतने सेट आ कि जी बुझी भी हो मतलब बोल से या देखा भी जाऊँ मतलब कि हमें इतना rough note करीबो करके सेट आ भी ठीक है sir हमको एक class पे exactly आउ के भी doctor अच्छी पढ़े दे भी ये जो उड़ा का rough notes को हो जो मैं पढ़े दे भी है ना Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.